welcome back for our final show of today saturday yes it has been saturday all day so we are loving having your company and we are so glad you could join us there's quite a bit of excitement about this this is our craft along so this is an amazing craft along all featuring our 12 days of christmas so i've got lots of bits here i'll show you it in a minute but first i'm going to go straight over to michelle because i'm I get the feeling we're going to need most of this two hours to do this. So I'm not going to waffle too much. I'm going to go straight over to Michelle. Say, hello, you ready? I'm very ready. You're very ready. Very ready and very excited. Exactly. Can you tell us all about the craft along yes. and what we're going to need? Um, absolutely. So this is my craft along. So we've created the top and the base with our shadow box die. So if I turn it around, you can see it's just the shadow box die. We've used lots of those pre-cut elements from the 12 days of Christmas, some lovely um, acetate, and then bringing this out, um, I've got, um, so it's just a jewellery box uh, lock and um, sort of clasp. It's got a really very weird name, um, but basically if you just search for um, jewellery box, so your metal finders for jewellery box locks or hinges, things like that, you will find them. Um, you can see inside I've got chocolate in mine. Um, everyone's fighting over the chocolate. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've got chocolate in mine. You could put um, um, envelopes and cards in either side, some little albums you could make in there, absolutely anything. The box itself you could use um, as a centerpiece and have lights in there because it's just an acetate box. It's very simple to pop together. Um, and would you believe I'm not using my Gemini today? No, not once. Will you not need it for the shadow die box? Would you believe we need our Gemini today? <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, well, the rest of it, I, there were the pre-cut elements from the 12 days of Christmas. So I'm thinking, I don't even need my Gemini, but of course we do. I was just making sure Corinne was paying attention. Thank you. I passed that test. You did. Passed. Tick. With flying colours. Thank you. <laughs> okay, would you like to tell everybody, including their Gemini, <laughs> what they'd yes. need for their, um, to make this craft along? Yes, absolutely. So what you are going to need from your 12 days of Christmas collection, you're going to need the Christmas chair pre-cut elements, the festive bow pre-cut elements, your 8x8 topper pad, 12 by 12 paper pad and the A4 luxury mixed card pack. <coughs> You're going to need your 6 by 4 shadow box die set, your 12 by 12 winter wonderland luxury foiled acetate, your double sided centura pearl in ivory, and then what you're also going to need is the big score scoreboard, your guillotine, some kalal tacky glue, foam pads, red liner tape, hot glue gun, ribbon, flower pearls, metal corners, metal catch curved buckle horn, lock clasp and a pear tree, a juniper pear tree. That was very good. <laughs> and of course, a Gemini too, Mickey. And of course, that's what threw me because the Gemini's not on that picture. So I was thinking, oh, you don't need a Gemini. It's my craft along. I should know that I do need one. But you obviously left it off the list. I must absolutely. have done, yeah. I always leave something off the list, but it's normally something like red liner tape, you know, something Small. sort of insignificant. Not the main, <laughs> not the main item, but you know. Go. Never mind. I'm blaming okay. Lily. I'm going to give everyone time to sort of do a little bit of running around, getting together all that they need while I have a chat with our lovely Stephanie because she's going to be crafting along with us. Good evening or afternoon, wherever you are. Hello, Stephanie. Hello, how are you, Brian? Well, I'm really good, thank you. It's lovely to see you. Have you done a craft along since the last one you did when I was here? No, that was it. That was my first. This is my second. Oh, wow. I, obviously, you've got it written in that you can only do craft alongs with me. I feel very privileged. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to be here with you and Michelle. Are you going to be using the 12 Days of Christmas or have you got another collection that you're going to be crafting with? Now, I'm going to use the uh, 12 Days of Christmas. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. And have you ever made anything like this before? Never. Never. <laughs> 
Well, you first. It's going to be really, really interesting and see what you do. So if you've got everything ready, I'm going to quickly show everybody the 12 days of Christmas and then we can get straight in and get on with the, the craft along. So if you've got any questions, Stephanie, just wave, let me know and I'll keep an eye on the screen and um, pick up from you when I need to. So if you are new to this and you haven't yet got the 12 days of Christmas, I've got, this is actually sort of your metal part. So this is slightly different from um, the main bit. So this is your sort of, what do you call it? Um, your tools element of the 12 days of Christmas, more than the bits that Michelle's going to be using. But if you like the feel of it, then this is what we've got available at the moment. We've got our Merry Christmas foliage and tag. I love this. So you've got the tag at the top, and then you can extend this as long as you want. So that is really useful. You've got your Merry Christmas die, and then you've got your foliage there. That's what it said. It said Merry Christmas foliage and and tag so that covers everything doesn't it then you've got your stamps we've got our warm wishes stamps which are a lovely set of stamps really lovely christmas themed ones we've got the pretty partridge which cuts into your cardstock but it's got a die to cut it out but if you want to cut into your cardstock you can like that lovely in these colors you've got your um creator card christmas tree which is it's almost like a snippet of the Christmas tree, isn't it? I'm loving that. Really, really pretty. You can see on there. Again, another one that would be brilliant for paper piecing. We've got um, 12 days stamp and die set. So you've got the 12 one. There you go, partridge in a pear tree, two turtle doves. Um, I can't remember all of them without going backwards. I could do it if I could sing backwards. <laughs> Gold rings, goose laying, um, maids milking. Yeah, all the rest of it. Drummers drumming. I can just about know. Swans. Oh, is that swan swimming? There we go. So you've got all the stamps and you've got the dies as well. Well done, Dean. I give Dean credit for that one. There we are. And then we've got two embossing folders. You've got your Christmas wishes, which is beautiful background. I'm loving that. Isn't that absolutely pretty? And then this one feels to me straight away. I think this, this is a 3D one. I don't know. I thought it felt a bit 3D, but no. Perhaps it is 2D. Um, again, another one. This is your partridge in a pear tree embossing fold. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? I've not got any elements of this collection, so I am really looking forward to seeing what you can make with this. So this is a selection of the original collection. So we're going to give you this with over a 10% savings. So you've £54 or $68. With your platinum price, it's $43.20 or $54.50. 40 it's a cracking cracking price if you want that then make sure you pop it in your baskets now okay so stephanie's ready michelle's ready shall we start yes yes says everybody yes and we'll start with the die cutting um so we i don't forget it again <laughs> so you've got your shadow box die i'm using um the six by four i've got mine out here already and this is the only element from this that i'm using um, it just makes a perfect base and lid when especially when you use acetate it just goes together beautifully so i used some of the blue because it's got that sparkle on it look at that Ooh, that's nice absolutely beautiful so we're going to take two pieces of this because we're going to cut this out twice and it's good it's double sided isn't it for when you start to roll it is yeah so um it's double sided again that's why i use the centura pearl um ivory because it's all double sided so i don't need to worry about anything with regards to that uh, so just popping it on we're going to run it through and we're going to run it through um, twice because we're going to need uh, two of these and then we can put that die to the side and um not worry about it anymore. Forget that you're doing die cutting after that. It's like the main part of my job to die cut things and I'm thinking, oh, I don't have to die cut anything. Only me, that can happen to. Only me. So that's one, let's run it through one last time. And there we go, and pop it through. So you can do this. We do have some uh, other shadow box dies that, that are bigger than these. So you can do that with all of these. All you need to do is just, um, you know, adapt the size of it um, with your acetate. It's really clever though, isn't it? Um, 
how it just does all the cutting and scoring in one go. Oh, it's so clever. So clever. This has got to be one of my all-time uh, favourite dies, except for all of our other bag dies and box dies. <laughs> and edgeables and everything else. Uh, right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to start to just burnish all of these score lines. So all of them we're just going to burnish because they're going to fold beautifully. I love out. that you don't have to worry about mountain folds, valley folds. You just roll in the same direction all the way, don't you? Yeah. Just keep yeah. rolling towards the centre. Yeah, absolutely. So for that last piece, what I always do is, because it's quite narrow, I fold it under and then I bring it over this way. So it allows you to um, burnish that one, last one really well without having to worry um, that you may go a little wonky because it can happen when you've got a thin tab like that. So I always pop it underneath and scar it that way. And then let's scar these sides. Loads and loads of people have um, joined us and I'll read all the comments as we go, but I wanted to let you get started. Yeah. So exactly the same on these end pieces. We're just scarring them all for now. And then we will pop um, our glue on. So it's entirely up to you where what you do with this. So these are my um, four tabs that I'm going to be popping glue on. Uh, you can use your red liner. Uh, you can use wet glue. It depends which you find easier. But for these two side uh, bits, we're going to use red liner. And I'm going to think use my six mil because it fits on there just perfectly. It's almost like that tab was made for this width of red liner. I'm sure that's one of the considerations when they're doing it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's sometimes, especially when we're creating things like this, it's almost, when I say it's almost like it was made for it, I wonder um, if it absolutely was. I'm sure that's one of the considerations. It's like we were saying earlier with the shaker cards, they do the gap so that the foam fits. With these, I'm sure they do it so that the, the tape fits too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So burnish that down so it stays where you want it to go or where you want it to be. And then we're going to lift that up. And we're going to turn it over this way. So you're going to fold that in half. So you've got that burnish scar line there. You've got this second one here. So fold it in half there and bring it all the way over. So you can see I've got a scar line there and a scar line there. So I've literally folded it in half mm -hmm. because then what is going to happen is it's going to naturally glue it exactly where you need it to be. And I think it takes something to realise it, but actually you don't have to worry about rolling and folding. It just folds into place. Doesn't it does. It? it does. Absolutely. So uh, I know you can't see it so much because of the, the colour. So you've got a scar line, one, two, three and four. So you're going, to scot you're going to fold it over on that second scar line. So you can see I've got scar line one, scar line two. We're going to take that off and then you're going to fold it all the way over and press it down. And then when it pops back up, you have naturally got the sides of your box. Brilliant. And then what we're going to do with this bit is you've got those two tabs here. So we're going to pop a little bit of glue on the tab there and there. So these are those little mm -hmm. side ones that poke out. So we're going to pop glue there and there. And on here, just in a triangle shape, you're going to pop a little bit of glue. So I'm going to pop glue there and just there. All right, glue yeah. on that bit there and glue just here. And then that tab, I'm going to use this glue. So I, do, I tend to do the red liner on the sides and the wet glue on this. So you're going to push this up. And the reason, I have to tell you what, I've done the wrong corners. I do apologise. So it comes at an angle here. So it's these two inside corners. <laughs> it you wiped to, off really easily. It did wipe off very easily. So these two inside corners, 
not these two outside ones you need to pop a little bit of glue on because when you bring it over you've got that diagonal so if I turn it round this way while holding these two sides in you're going to press this here and it's all just going to naturally sit where you need it to go um, so we're just going to hold that just for a minute while that wet glue grabs so you can see you've got those beautiful diagonals are absolutely perfect on there this here it needs to go straight down sometimes when you're popping it over um, you need to make sure that you don't tuck it too far under so it, it goes diagonally under or diagonally out it just very easily just will tuck and sit straight so I can't see because it's not it's navy but we've got lovely mitered corners there have we yes those beautiful mitered corners that just make it sit beautifully it's funny because I thought to myself okay we've got oh yes Stephanie's asking a question I didn't see that hi Stephanie hi my question is that the tape go on the very outside edge yes 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 it's on the very outside edge before the first um, score line okay very good thank, thank you. you we have another question just from Tess on YouTube is it, is it possible to get the dimensions if you don't have the shadow box die so what's it what's the finish size that it's making oh, so the finish size that it makes it's a six by four um, after the show I will pop the the dimensions and things for you to be able to make one yourself without uh, the shadow box die um, I will pop 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 I will pop that on afterwards brilliant thank you <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue those two corners. I'm going to glue across here and then I'm going to pop this together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly pop that under without getting glue on my fingers. I'm going to die cut another one out and I'm going to die cut it out in my cream. Okay. So then we're going to pop that together and then people can see okay, a lot be easier. Really useful. Um, what I'm doing I thought to myself well I'm not going to use black because no one can see black and then I got distracted that by this blue um, glitter card <laughs> and thought well that's not black but then just didn't quite realize again you're not going to quite be able to pick it up yeah so let me pop that to the side um, Stephanie you you keep with your two blue ones I'm going to cut it back out another one out of this so you can see a lot better what I'm going to do when we pop this next so one So just for together. everyone crafting along, no one else needs to cut it out of cream. No. This is just for just, visibility. Yeah, just while for me. While you're just doing that, I'll just start on a couple of the, que of the points we've got. Um, I, don't, um, I don't think it's on. We have Ben in saying, good evening, everyone. Onion barge is on the menu tonight. My Ben? Yes. <gasps> he has he been making them? He got a delivery the other day of, like, he's, he's got some chapati flour and he's got some whatever you make on onion bags so he's hour. been making these himself yeah mm. i think that's very rude to be telling us that well i hope you enjoy them ben i, um, I hope he doesn't choke on them <laughs> we do hope he doesn't <laughs> choke on them judy brandenburg good afternoon from mid missouri to all the crafters tv and fellow crafters may your day be blessed well thank you judy oh kim thinks it's a beautiful craft along so you're just folding it and then i'll stop when you yeah. finish folding okay um, Barbara R says hello everyone from Indiana handcrafted by Gaz says a lovely evening to Michelle Corin Dean Charlotte our lovely social superstar who's been shining bright today and all my crafty friends oh that's a nice comment thank you Aww. Gaz um, Rhonda is a big hello to everyone and she's in Oak Park near Chicago Jane Quayle is in from a very wet Yorkshire yeah we saw how wet it was we took one look out the door during um, the break and we shut it quickly <laughs> we um, did. Lynn Blackledge is evening everyone from the Isle of Wight Terry H hello all crafty friends from a hot hot central Iowa um, Lynn Morton's in from a wet Newcastle Lois is afternoon from Ohio Kirsty D says hello to everyone so does Mary Shaw and um, Crafty Stacey Lou, this isn't on, thank you. Evening, guys. Currently watching on my phone, eating McDonald's in the car. Couldn't get any better. That sounds lovely. It does, doesn't it? It does. It does. It? OK, I'll leave it at that one at Crafty Stacey Lou's. I'll come back in. I've seen everybody else's, um, and we'll do it in a minute. But I know Michelle wants to talk through this next stage. Right, so this is your shadow box, as we've scored all of those um, sides. So we're going to turn it over. So this is the outside. 
And on those two outside tabs, so you've got a score line one, two, three and four. On that very outside piece is where we're going to pop our red liner tape. Uh, on both long sides. I'm going to pop that across there. And then on this long side as well, we're going to pop the red liner tape all the way across. And then you're going to turn it back over. And then what you're going to do, so you've got score line one and two, three and four. At number two, we're going to fold it over. So let me, so let's take our red liner off. So fold from the outside. You've got scar line one, you've got scar line two. Yeah. Fold that over. Yeah. And then on this last scar line here, you're going to fold that all the way over. Mm -hmm. And then when it pops up, you've got your side. Yeah. So we're going to do that again. It's perfectly square. Yeah. So we're going to do that again. I'm going to take my red liner tape off. So you can see I folded it here on the one, two. So the second scar line. We folded it over. I've taken my red liner tape off. This last scar line that is right on the inside, you're going to fold that one over. I'm going to burnish it down. Then when you stand it back up, your shadow box is perfectly uh, created those two sides. So then you've got these little tabs here. So if I turn it up here, this triangle bit is where you're going to pop a little bit of glue and on the other side. So pop those down and they will tuck under. So we're going to pop glue there and there on those two little triangle bits. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pop a little glob of glue there because what that's going to do is when we bring this up, it's going to stick to this. Mm -hmm. And then when we bring it over, it's going to stick there as well. So much easier to see it in the cream. Yeah. Thanks for doing this, because it really is. So you can see a bit of glue on those inside corners. And then again, just on that one last tab is where you're going to pop your glue. So I turned mine this way just because of the um, how I find it easy to do. So you're going to bring it up and you're just going to tuck it under, making sure that it's nice and straight. And then you're going to hold these pieces in and you're going to hold that up and it's all just going to grab lovely and if you feel that you've sort of tucked that underneath a little bit just lift it up and then push it back down push it back in and then just re sort of adjust it and then when you bring these sides in again it's just going to hold it all nice and snug until that glue grabs it's going to grab there and there and we popped that little bit of glue on those tabs on this side as well. So it's glued up, it's glued over, and then it's glued down onto the inside. So we're going to do exactly the same. I've got my little tabs, and can you can see that they're tucking. So I've tuck both of those in. A little bit of glue, it doesn't need to be a lot, just a dot of glue there and there. Dot of glue on that inside corner and then glue across here. Again, I'm going to turn mine round. So you're going to bring it up and over and then open those just a little so you can pop that in and then push it down and then hold it all. So this hadn't quite gone off, so it allowed me to just open that side a little bit um, to make sure that I could get that in and then I've just pressed that back down. Press it all down and hold it until you're happy that all your glue is um, caught and then that is your two Brilliant. shadow boxes. Excellent. Okay. Okay, I shall do some more comments. Well, you, could you need to do your second blue one, do you? Yes, I, I will. I'll finish my blue okay. one off. Yeah. I'll just carry on reading a few more comments. So, Evelyn Kiefer is in from sunny Colorado. Lillian Kwok says, hello again, um, everyone watching. Oh, Catherine says, you should be crafting along with Michelle too, Corinne. <laughs> I, I know, I've, I've done it sometimes, have been crafting with me, but, yeah, I'm tr keeping, at, keeping um, contact with, um, with Stephanie and all the comments. I think I've got enough on for now. I've got enough on. Oh, I've got loads to do, have I, Dean? Okay, he's going to keep me busy, <laughs> apparently. Uh, 
Shadaya says hello again. Lillian Kwok said this. That's one of my most used dies. They go, people love these box dies. They are so, so, these shadow box dies, so useful. Vanessa is good afternoon, everyone from Florida. Um, Lynn Bledsoe is hello from Indiana. Um, Lois says, Gaz, this craft along is right up your street. I can see you smiling all the way across the pond. I love how, as a community, you know each other and you know the sort of projects that each other will really enjoy doing. That's just brilliant i think um, yeah. sarah ibbotson says hello everyone again everyone um love this hi everyone from connecticut says karen menzies carletta morris says my granddaughter is here today and keeping me busy helping her with a diamond dot page oh they're really good have you got um our light pad because apparently they're really good to shine underneath your um diamond dots um, Renee is in from Mineral Wells in Texas. Hello, Renee. Oh. Um, crafting, not grafting by Hillary. Hello, everyone from a wet and miserable Northumberland. Yes, it is a little bit damp out there. Um, crafting along in solidarity. Um, wearing my usual craft along attire. Of course, wearing my usual craft along attire. Says handcrafted by Daz. Guys. <laughs> He's got his dunga shorts on, hasn't he? I don't know. I don't know what he... I was a bit scared to ask. I was like, does he do craft longs in his underpants? Well, I wasn't guys, sure. anything goes. Is it anything goes, he's got? <laughs> wow. OK. Thank you. Um, she didn't say where in Northumberland. No, no, but it's wet. It's wet. Deb Rich says, watching in Wales with one eye on the rugby too. Oh, who's playing tonight? I've lost track. I know my husband's watching, but I don't know who it is. Um, that is so cool how Michelle folded the frame. I've always had a hard time folding this type of frames. This trick makes it so much easier, says Vanessa. Yeah, this is what it is. It's hopefully, we can show you the easy ways to do it. Oh, that's neat, Michelle. I always poked a pen down the sides. That's the first time I've seen anyone fold the sides down flat like that. Absolutely brilliant. Lillian Quack is loving that. So thank you so much for all your comments. I finally caught up. And I think Michelle has caught up with her boxes too. Let's just see. Stephanie, are you, have you got two boxes made? Just a minute. We're getting there. See if she's got... Oh, she's yeah, got one and I'm a half. I'm almost there. One and a half. Nearly there. Oh, are you doing it in the blue or are you doing it in the burgundy? Oh, I picked burgundy. I like that colour. That's nice. That's yeah, a really nice lovely colour. OK, well, I'll let you finish doing yours. If you've got no problems, I'll let you carry on with yours. And, uh, oh, Michelle, are you ready to do the next bit? Uh, I am. I, I, I'm always ready. Always ready. Not organised, but always ready. Two totally different things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got my two shadow boxes ready, so I'm going to pop those to the side, because what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, bring our acetate in, and we're going to cut two pieces of acetate. So I'm going to bring in my guillotine, it's not my guillotine, it's my trimmer. Your guillotine or your trimmer, it's entirely up to you. I love the fact now that we have this uh, trimmer because I use a trimmer more often than not um, when I'm crafting. So we're going to bring in one piece. So we need two pieces in total, but you're going to cut two pieces and they're both going to be... Um, so cut two pieces at eight and a half. Talking to myself again, that's all right. Eight and a half by eight. So that's one. And two. So again, eight and a half by eight. So I've still got my carrier sheet on. I can tell you if your carrier sheet on. Sorry? I, I wondered if your carrier sheet was still yeah, on. Yeah, I could hear it when I um, used my guillotine, uh, my cutter Trimmer. then. Right, so I'm going to bring in our scoreboard. Let me just move those pieces. And I'm just... So on the long side... Um, it's entirely up to you. So I'm, let me check which side my carrier sheet is on. So I'm just going to, there we go. Because it's always hard to tell. One side has got the pattern on and you'll be able to feel it and one side doesn't. So the side that hasn't got the pattern, 
I don't suppose it really matters unless you're using sort of a coloured one and you want a particular side of the pattern out. It's just easier. If I score it on this side to fold it this way with acetate, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. If I score it on that side, so if I score it here now and then try to fold it away, um, it just tends to be a little bit harder to do. Right, so on the long side, we're gonna score, so at the eight and a half inches, we're gonna score it at three inches. And then we're gonna score it at seven and seven eighths. They basically go to eight and go back one, one Yeah, line. one little notch. It has to be this because it needs to fit inside nice and snug. I so, was thinking at first, I was thinking, oh, you've got a four by six shadow box, so you need 10 inches and you've only cut to eight. Um, but then I realised you've got the lip, haven't you? So it yes, takes off an inch. For the inside, yeah. Yeah. So again, on the eight and a half inches, so on the long side, we're going to score at three inches. Let's give it a nice good score. And then at seven and seven eighths. So just one notch back from that eight um, inch mark on your scoreboard. Let's pop those there and then bring this in. So I'm going to take my carrier sheet off and I'm going to fold it. I love that first fold of acetate. When you just feel it, it suddenly goes, doesn't yeah. it? It's very, very, very satisfying. And then that little tab as well. So if I bring this in, you can see that it's going to sit in there absolutely Perfect. perfectly. So then let's bring in that other piece as well. And what I'm going to do is, oh, let's take that off first. I'm going to put my tape down here. So this is where, if I'm leaving it, so this is just roughly half an inch. If I'm leaving it that wide, I'm going to use um, my wider tape. Now, mm -hmm. the reason being, so that's your 12 mil. If I run my 6 mil down it, you will see the line of the red liner tape. So if you want to use your 6 mil, then trim this down um, widthwise. It just, it, it sits a lot neater if you use the same width of red liner um, on there. So if I cut that down really, really sort of to three mil, I'd use my three mil. Yeah. But I find either the six mil or the 12 mil is sort of a perfect width for this. Basically, you're covering the whole of that panel the in whole... red liner so it's not visible. Yeah, yeah. If people if... say, how do you put, how do you stick acetate down? Well, if you do this, so it's completely covered that whole of that little panel then it's not visible is it yeah anymore? yeah you don't see it it's just um the nicest and neatest way finding the edge of the acetate is the hard thing because you can't see it on your glass mat <laughs> there we go so let's just bring this one in and i'm going to give that a nice burnish and then this piece as well there's nothing I don't think there's anything more satisfying than that it just clicks doesn't it it does so you can see that that's how we're going to pop it together so this tab here is going to go onto this three inch side very much like when we're making any of our boxes uh, our bags you know when we add those two pieces together so this is sort of exactly the same. Make sure that's nice and burnished down. There we go. So whichever way you find easier to do this bit, either laying it down flat onto your mat, holding it up in your hands, just say that because it can be a little bit tricky to see where you're lining up just because it's the acetate. So there we go. It's gone on perfect. And let's do the same with the other side. Pop it down there. Turn it round to do that. So I can get my poker tool underneath. There we go. So 
folding that to sort of that rectangle it needs to be at. And this is where you sort of, you turn it every which way until you get it exactly where you want it to be. And then you've got, there we go. So again, bringing this in, pop those two in like that at yeah. the bottom and you'll find, so pop that one side in, pop that in and you will find it sits in absolutely perfect. So we are going to glue that at the bottom, but I just want to show you how perfect it fits. I can hear the click. That was a really satisfying click. Very wasn't it? satisfying, yeah. Um, so this bit again is entirely up to you. You can pop your red liner tape around here, pop it around the bottom. If you want to use your tacky glue, um, that takes obviously a lot longer to um, go off when you're using it on acetate, but it does work. So if you feel that you want to do it that way, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to pop red liner and I'm just using my three mil because it's going to fit in there perfectly. And again, I could have done this before I popped it together, but um, again, that's entirely up to you. I'm not, I'm not too worried that I didn't do it that way. I always like to put my acetate together and then sit it in there, make sure that I'm happy with the fit um, before I add my red liner to it. And again, there's no right or wrong with that. It's just, we all work that a little bit differently. My mum said I work in the most awkward way and I like to pride myself in doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. And then, oops, make sure it's nice and burnished down. And then we're going to pop it in. And this next bit is the hardest bit of the whole um, craft along. Because when you pop one side in... It's going to grab, isn't it? <laughs> it's going to grab. So you sort of uh, need to have two sets of hands. But you do get it in eventually. Can I just, while you're just doing that, Lynn Morton is saying, sorry this might have been answered, but do you score acetate on the back or on the front when adding to a box or card which faces outward, if this makes sense? Um, so, I score on the inside of the acetate. So if the pattern's on the outside, I score on the inside because um, it's easy to get it to fold with that scar line. If you fold it on the other side, it just doesn't. So yes, on the um, opposite of the pattern side. Yeah. All right, so what I tend to do is you can see that I'm sort of, wait, there we go, pushing those bits in at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I tend to pop one side in, and while I'm popping that side in, I'm holding this up, bowing everything, and it pops in. And then either with your hand, or your ruler. Now mine's gone in a little wonky, so it's very easy to just pop it off. Can you see? I can pop that off, I can reline it up, and then I can pop it back in. And then when you're quite happy with that, I find on this, this sort of texture, not textured, this coat of car sock, your red liner peels off a lot easier. I think it's because there's that coating on mm. there. I think with your white and your craft and your black, once it's touched, it's stuck. But when you've got a bit of a coating on, I think you've got a little bit more uh, wiggle room, a little bit more time to peel it back off and pop it back in. But you can see, you pop your hand in and you'll be able to feel that you've got it all the way to the bottom. So then we're going to go around and burnish all those sides just with our fingers. And then we're going to pop that on and it's just all going to be... Perfect. When you are putting this on though, so pop, can you see how that bit bends in? So just tuck your two corners in there and bring it over and this bit, just press a little bit there and it's going to go in. If you press anywhere else, it's going to bow here and it's not going to sit flat. But if you do that on the side, you can see it sits flat all ways round. Brilliant. That's really effective. Absolutely lovely. And um, 
Rita says, thank you, Michelle, for being willing to post the instructions for the shadow box for those of us who do not have the die. Yeah, because you can still make them yourselves. Um, Terry H says, I can't craft along today. My shadow dies are still packed away, but this video is going straight into my saved craft along. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant, Terry. Um, Anne from the um, Twin Cities says, put a little wet glue on top of the tape. That's, that's the other yes. thing you can do. Yep. Yeah, of course. For, um, for our Charlotte, um, Crafting Not Crafting by Hilary, who said she was in Northumberland, is in Bedlington. Oh, that's where her boyfriend lives. Perhaps he knows her. Charlotte's Perhaps got a boyfriend. Perhaps he knows her. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Kendall um, says, hi, everyone from Minnesota. And Sarah Morley says, evening all. I'm in Norfolk, UK. There you go. That's where Ooh. our... Um, Oh, Michelle's from so yes small world small world right Michelle are you happy for us to do a little break and yes. then we can do the next bit yeah. and when we come back that's going to give our Stephanie time to catch up and I will uh, catch up with Stephanie after the other side of this break but first of all we're going to have a little VT uh, all about craft your stash and we'll be back in a couple of minutes <laughs> the most amazing week lined up for you. All week, we're focusing on how to get the most from all of the stuff that you've got in your stash. So every day, we're gonna be doing a fantastic Craft Your Stash show. Let's have a look at what we've got in store for you. Hello, join me on Monday the 2nd of October to Craft Your Stash. We're gonna be looking at all things bag making, including bag making dies and bag making templates. Join me on Tuesday the 3rd for everything you need to know about sticky stuff. We're going to be doing a glue school and covering all of the different adhesives and why you need them in your stash. Wednesday, you're going to be with me and I've got an amazing box making 101 plant. So all you're going to need is some cardstock. Now I find pearl card is easier to work with if you're getting started. You're going to need a scoring board, whether it's your big score, your score master, your ultimate, whatever it is. I want you to have scissors, your tape pen and a guillotine. That's all you're going to need. Come with an open mind. I've got so much to show you. Join me on the 5th for everything ink pad. If you've ever wondered, finesse alcohol, finesse waterproof, pigment, water reactive, shimmer, duet, quick dry, what does it all mean? I'm going to help you understand what all of the ink pads do and how you're going to craft them in your stash and make everything a perfect picture of colour. Join me on the 6th of October where I'm going to give you a little 101 on our Gemini 2 die cutting and embossing machine. Also going to be covering our scoreboards, I'm going to be covering the enveloper and of course a little talk around our fabulous Ultimate Pro and all the amazing things that that does too. So I hope you can join me. Hey guys, Ro, I'm so excited about this. Tune in, join in on the 7th of October where I'm going to be showing you all things foil press. Maybe you want to see a little bit more information and detail as to how you use your foil press stamp. I'm going to show you. Maybe you want to use your crafter's companion wafer thin dies. I'm going to show you. Maybe you're going to be foiling your cardstock. I'm going to show you it all and so much more. Come along, tune in, join in. If you've still got it in the box, I want you to get it out of the box. So tune in, join in. We're going to have some fun. Hi guys, I'm just here to ask you to come and join me uh, for my Craft Your Stash show. It'll be on Sunday the 8th of October at 3pm. This is what we're going to be making. I've got a gorgeous little explosion box. I'll just give you a quick peek now. Take the lid off and of course it wouldn't be a jam show if we didn't include some mixed media so I have lots of mixed media products with me including the stencils the glitter paste the gilding wax the glitter glues and together with our vintage snowman collection so hope you can come along for the ride and join me so make sure you tune in from Monday the 2nd of October trust me this is a week you are not going to want to miss It's going to be an amazing week next week. So, so many hints and tips on how to use that crafty stash. I'm, as I said, I'm back Saturday, Sunday. I'm going to be on this side presenting with Craig on the foil press and Jan on mixed media. They're going to be perfect. Um, oh, Deborah Spencer is uh, listening whilst waiting for the drive through Car, car drive, the car wash drive through Get it through. Get it right. drive through car wash. That's the right words. drive through car wash. Why don't I just say what it said on the screen? That would be absolutely perfect. Well, I hope um, your car is sparking clean. I think cars are all going to be clean out there because it's raining so much. I don't think we need to go through the, the car wash tonight. So absolutely brilliant. So um, are we going to crack on or are we going to quickly say hello to Stephanie? Which one are we going to do next? 
Crack on. Crack on. Okay. <laughs> so hope. Oh, okay. So yeah, I think Stephanie looks to be um, doing okay. I can see her. There we go. She, yeah, she's nodding at me. She's, she's just had got herself. She's waving. We've done a selfie with her, and <laughs> she's doing. I can see. I can see she's up to the acetate. So she's just a little bit behind, but she'll soon catch up. So Michelle, what's the next bit? Uh, right. So the next bit is the album for the inside. So I've got my cream double sided um, Centura pearl. Mine are A4 sheets. So we're going to um, cut these down. So bringing in our guillotine, we're going to cut one at ten and seven eighths by seven inches. So ten and seven eighths by seven. And let's score that one first. We do need to cut another one, but um, the other one's just a slightly different um, size. And the reason being, so I'll bring this in and show you. The reason being, if I open it up, let's hide that chocolate. If I open it up, you can see that you've got, um, so these two pieces are the same as these two pieces, but then I've got that flap. Mm -hmm. So hence one being just a bit of a different size to the other. Uh, pop that chocolate to the side for later. Find my scarring tool. So this is your piece that is 10 and 7 eighths by 7 inches. So on the long side, we're going to score this at four and a half. And then we're going to score it at six and a half. Six and a half. And then we're going to pop that to the side. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring in our guillotine again and we're going to cut another piece. Uh, this is going to be seven by eight inches. So that's eight and this is seven. And then again, Let's bring in this and then on that eight inches, so again on the long side, we're going to mm -hmm. score at four and a half. Which is the same as we had before. Yeah. And six and a half. There we go. So what's going to happen? Well, you can see it a lot better on the cream, can't you? Let's just fold and burnish our scar lines. Making sure they're nice and straight. And then this one as well. So you've got those two scar lines. That one. And this one. So what's going to happen is it's going to going to glue together like that, and it's going to come round. Ah, so okay. that backs really well in for reinforced, isn't it? It's double thickness. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so one is going to be just a little bit shorter um, than the other. So put that one on the inside. Um, yes, yeah, so you can put that one on the inside, but just remembering. Um, so obviously make sure that you layer it up. And the only reason that I just trimmed it that little bit is just so it all folds nice and neatly up. Mm -hmm. You don't get bulky joints then, do you? That's it. That's it. So I've got... My, so this one here is the shorter one. So that's... So this one, on the one that looks like a piece of a book, we're going to glue that side, the smaller side, on the inside. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. So let's pop... I'm going to use tacky glue because we've got that coated cardstock. But just remember that you don't need to use lots. So popping that on there, I'm going to flip mine over because I need to make sure that they line up on that scar line there. 
which it does, and then I bring it back over, and that's where I can see that I've got that little bit of a border where it doesn't match right up to there. You can absolutely cut that the same width if you want. Again, I just did it because it just comes round really nice. So give that a good burnish. And then we're going to cut our mats and layers for this. So we're going to pop that there. Right, so mats and layers for the outside first, we're going to do. So um, I picked before red card for the inside, but I'm going to pick green this time. So I'm going to bring in green and then I'm going to pick some pattern paper as well. Uh, and before I used this one, and actually I might use this one this Ooh, time. I like that one. I don't want it to blend in too much though, but it doesn't, it pops. It does look, mm. look lovely. So these are my two pieces that I'm going to use. So again, we're going to bring in our guillotine. Oh, can't pick it up. Your guillotine or your trim it, it's entirely up to you. And with your green card stock, we're going to trim this down to six and three quarters. Ah, oh, yeah, because you were working on seven before, weren't you? Yeah. So. Yeah, so again, if I bring this in, you can see that it's, a, it's going to cut down to a lovely mat and layer, that quarter of an inch. Um, so six and three quarters, and then we're going to cut two pieces at four and a half. So that's one. And that's two. And again, if I bring this in, it's going to sit, oh, yep. it's just a little bit too wide, but I'll trim that down, but that's absolutely fine. Um, so you've got your two at six and three quarters, and then we want two at one and three quarter. So again, that one's going to sit on there. Oh yeah, I can see that fits perfect. So we need two of those. So is that one going to be... No, it's going to bring in another piece of card. Let's trim this. So we need one... In fact, let's cut it all down to that six and three quarters. So six and three quarters again. I need another one at one and three quarters. And then I need one at one and a quarter. Ah, for your, your flat bit. I know. For my little flat bit, yeah. So we've got two, which are six and three quarters by four and a quarter. We've got two, which are six and three quarters by one and three quarter. And then we've got one, which is six and three quarters by... So one and three quarters, one and a quarter. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go down again another quarter of an inch for the pattern paper. Um, so we're going to go down to six and a half. So trimming that to six and a half. And then and again, so we're going to need two at four inches. So if I bring that in, you can see. I've trimmed that a little bit too big, haven't I? Yeah, I'll mm -hmm. sort that in a minute. I've trimmed that to four and a half instead of four and a quarter. So I give you the right measurements. I've just popped it on here wrong. That's all. I trimmed that. I have a, it's um, right measurements. I've just measured it wrong. So there we go. Perfect. Perfect. Do I need two of those? So, another one at four inches wide. Pop that there. And then we need two more at one and a half inches wide. So it's a quarter of an inch narrower. Yeah. So, if I bring those wider ones in, you can see that that fits on there perfectly. And then lastly, to mat and layer onto that thinner one, this one needs to be an inch. And I think I've just got enough left. Look at that. So those are my mats and layers for the outside. Can I just pause you for one minute? Because Absolutely. Lynn's asked a question. You know you did the two pieces of ivory at the beginning? Yeah. One had two identical sizes with a bit down the middle. That's piece one. Yeah. The second piece 
which you had your flap on. What were your measurements for that, please? So the measurements for that cream card. Um, so one was cut at seven inches by ten and seven eighths, um, which was the main one, wasn't it? And we scored at four and a half and six and a half. And then the second piece with the flap on, um, we cut at seven inches by eight, and then we scored it at four and a half and six and a half. There you go. Seven inches by eight, scored at four and a half and six and a half, Lynn. Hope that helps. Yeah, yes. so it's, it's that piece, isn't it? Yes, it's We that scored piece. it at four and a half six and, and a then half. six and a half. Brilliant. Thank you. Fabulous. I'm just trying to uh, keep up with the comments um, where we, if we've got any questions. Yeah. So there we go. Right, so all we're going to do now is we're going to glue these together. Um, and then we'll pop them on, except for the flap bit. We won't pop that on yet because we've got... So either your clasp to pop on or if you want to use magnets, if you don't have a clasp, you can use magnets as well. But as we get there, um, we'll sort of go over that. So pop in that lovely matte and layer piece on. Oh, Susie's loving the green. I lo Do you know what? It's... Um, it's so much nicer than you think it's going to be, if that makes sense. You think... It's proper emerald green, yes, isn't it? Yes, yeah, definitely. Really, and I love all that gold accent on it. Mm. Some of it almost looks like foiling on there. Yes. Is it also called something like Hunter's Green or Robin Hood Green? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a perfect description. Like I say, it's lovely. And that's what I love about these. You can change them so easily just by you, even using the same pads, but just different papers from within the pad. Yeah, yeah, you can make it look so different. So just carrying on. Look, look at that one. It almost looks, doesn't it, mm. like some foiling on there. Ooh. Crafty Stacey Lou got her uh, Violet Studio trimmer today along with a couple of other things. Oh, I love mine. I uh, might just have one arriving on Monday. <laughs> I wanted it for me to cut out the middle of my cardstock and things, if for nothing else. Yes, yeah. It would be so handy. That's it. That's absolutely it. Um, I, and I love it because it, it's just easier for you to be able to trim that tiny little bit off your cardstock. I know you can do that with your guillotine, but when you get down to just wanting to trim a tiny little bit off, it's just so much easier with um, the trimmer than it is the guillotine. But then, you know, my guillotine, I can cut a few pieces, I'm gonna call them slices again, uh, a few pieces of card together. It goes through my mount board like um, butter. Oh, does it? It really does, yeah. You can't be gentle with it, though. You have to go wallop. Yeah. Um, maybe not wallop, maybe wall. <laughs> but it cuts through my mount board like an absolute dream. It really does. Mm. Um, right, so I'm just putting those in order. We're going to bring this in, and this is how it is, but we're going to flip it over um, to glue these outside pieces on. And you can see now that I trimmed mine back down to the correct size, they fit on there lovely. So I'm going to pop all these on here, these four. I'm not going to pop this tab bit on yet um, because I've got my clasp to go on that bit. And if I, if I bring it to me, I'm going to glue it on and then I'm going to be like, oops, I didn't mean to do that. You know, I know you, you did your two bigger panels, then you cut your two smaller panels. But if you'd have cut your big panel, a small panel, a big panel, a small panel, your pattern pan. would have carried on running. Would have followed. It? Yeah, yeah, absolutely perfectly. So if you have got um, a particular piece of paper that you want to use that has got um, a beautiful sort of picture on which some of these 12 by 12 sheets in here do then yeah definitely do that because it follows round and it does look beautiful so just sticking that down and then next one I got lost in my own thought then. 
Did you? What were you thinking? I did. Was it a good thought? It, well, it was uh, it's something that made me chuckle because the, the last time that I was up here, every time I picked this up, it was it just had a little bit left in the bottom. <coughs> so I had to keep shaking it, you know, to get to the glue to the top. Yeah. But then every time I picked up a glue pen, um, I shook that. <laughs> every time I picked up the hot glue gun, I was shaking that. It did make me chuckle. And even when I got home and was doing my craft for the rest of the week, I was still doing the same. My brain had got into such a habit of picking the glue up and shaking it that I was doing it with everything. So I'm just chuckling away to myself then because I've got going to use the hot glue later and I thought I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to shake it. Yeah. So effective, it's so lovely. And again, like you say, having that cream that's double-sided as well works well. Yeah. <coughs> oh, Sarah Morley says, um, what is the green card being used? So the green card is from the luxury mixed card stock from the 12 by 12 Christmas uh, collection. It's uh, an A4 pack and it's mixed. It's got some mirror in there and it's got this beautiful green, blue and red in. Perfect, thank you. Right, so turning it back over... So that is going to pop onto the outside and again um, this is my clasp that I've used. So bringing it in you can see that you've got those two separate pieces to that oh, clasp. Yeah. So what happens is it sits on my box like that um, and that's why it's called a curved one because mm -hmm. that handle's curved and it flicks up and down. Now again if you just want to use some hook and loop on here you can use hook and loop on there. Um, if you've got some magnets to close them, you can use magnets. If you just want to tie a little bit of ribbon around it, you can absolutely do that as well. So I'm gonna just pop that again to the side because um, I'm gonna pop that piece on um, right now. If you were doing magnets, you would either have your magnets underneath here or underneath that particular one there. Um, so I'm gonna bring this in. And I'm just going, in fact, let's glue it on first. That's going to make it a lot easier. And then we will line it up. I think I'd be tempted to do a hook and loop. It's quite it, easy, isn't it? It's just as easy. Um, this is just... If, it, if you've got the little fasteners, use them, yes. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Pop that on here. Make sure that's nice and stuck. So what I'm going to do is you're just going to bring this over and I'm just going to line it up and I'm going to make sure when I bring this in that it's going to fit. So if you've got some of those fabric clips, you could just hold it shut in position, couldn't you? Oh one at the gosh, top and one at the bottom. I've got some, um, you got some paper clips. I've got some paper clips. I don't know why I didn't think to pop that on. So popping that on here making sure that it's nice and straight. There we go. I think that's what I did at home, actually. So if I push that together, the, um, it's going to fit right mm. up to there. So it's going to make can... life easier for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So again, I'm using this. We're going to pop it on here, wherever you want it to go. And either with a pen or a pencil, let me bring in my pen. You're just going to mark to, um, so let me take that out. We're going to mark. So I'm lining that up with the edge of that green. So let me could just. You, could you, that's can you not flatten, flatten that down to make life a bit easier for you? I even could while do. It's shut? I absolutely could do. Don't take your, you, you, no, don't take your paper clips. Keep your paper clips on. Right. And like, you, you know how you rolled the edges over on your shadow box? Just flatten it. <gasps> Corinne, <laughs> how do I do anything without you? <laughs> do you see where I'm coming from now? <laughs> yes. you, you look to me. Now just say it, like that. Thank you. <laughs> Honest. My mum, I did, I do tell you, my mum always says I go about everything the hard way. 
So my pen through and I've just got those two. <laughs> two marks. You need to come with me every time I go to Hobby Maker, <laughs> every time I'm here. <laughs> so either with um, an eraser or with one of these. Now you've got to open it out, haven't now you? Now I'm going to open it out. But it just, I could see you struggling in the air. I do. That's how I craft at home sometimes. My husband does the same. He'll come in and he'll say, why don't you do this? And I'm like, because that would entail me actually thinking. <laughs> so that is going to be for that bit. I've got some little brads here that we're going to pop through. So they just attach with brads. They do come with little screws um, if you buy them from um, those online retailers. But you've swapped it out for brads. But I've swapped it out for brads because if I'm putting it onto mount board, I will use those little screws that come with it. But if I'm just popping it onto some card like this, then I will use my brads. So bringing that round. And then you can see that it just, it goes on very easy. Brilliant, yeah. And then what you're going to do is, again, let me bring in my paper clips to hold those sides. Because you <laughs> just... was yelling at the screen, Michelle, flatten the box. <laughs> as, if, as if you could hear me. <laughs> oh, that would be too easy. That would be too easy. So we're going to do it again. I'm going to flatten the box. <laughs> How clever am I? <laughs> and we're going to line it up so that hook has gone through there. And you can see that now it just sits absolutely beautifully. So pen marks through there again. <sighs> Who was shouting it? Shadaya. Shadaya, you need to come with me to Hobby Maker. <laughs> you need to come with me everywhere I'm going. Mary Keep... Ann Rosie says, teamwork at its best. <laughs> Keep me in line. They're really easy to work. I thought they were going to be quite complicated to fit, but they're not, are they? No, very easy. Which is another one of the main reasons that I wanted to show them, rather than the magnet closures. It is just when you get all these little metal findings that you can attach to your projects, it's just, it opens up the amount of different things that you can do with them. Let me just close that up. But you, with all your box making, I'm sure you've got loads of little gadgets. I've, I have. Bits I've got pieces. so, yeah, so many little bits. And then we're going to turn that over, just flatten it out. Find that other hole. And then flatten that piece out. And then when I bring those together, it's going to fit and lock Brilliant. beautifully. So that's as simple as those are. Um, to fit and then we're going to cut our paper um for on the insides but do you think we're at a place where we should see i think we should we should catch yeah. up and see what everyone's doing see if there's any more questions and see how our stephanie's getting on she seems to be oh she's still smiling so there we go she's oh. smiling <laughs> there we are how are you getting on stephanie i don't understand why michelle's measurements and my measurements come out different um, like the first panel, I thought was supposed to be six and three quarter by four and a half, the big one that would be your front, right? I think it was six and three quarters by four and a quarter. It was. Your memory's amazing. It was four and a quarter. Uh, so that the I wrote down was... four and a half, so my mistake then. That makes more sense. No, you cut it to exactly the same size as Michelle cut it to. Yes, I. so I was <laughs> saying four and a half, yeah, and I was saying the wrong measurement of cutting it wrong, but no, you did exactly what... So the good thing is you did exactly what I told you to do. <laughs> <laughs> you followed me exactly. I've been doing that. <laughs> you just followed me down the wrong garden path, which I'm very good at leading people down that one. That's okay. It's been an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> it always is. It always is. <laughs> so hopefully you can uh, put those put those right, and then you'll be able to catch up. What are you going to use as your fastener on your little um, case? Oh, um, on the case itself. Uh, are you using a hook and loop? The burgundy, it? It's not together, but it's a... Uh, oh, sorry, uh, I mean your little folder that you're making at the moment. The folder that you're making at the moment, the bit that goes inside. Yes, I've got the folds done. It has to be put together. Yeah. And then, you know, the rest of the box put together. All right, brilliant.
brilliant. But I think I turned my acetate the wrong way, but it took me a while to figure out how to get the um, uh, score. But it's yeah. beautiful when it's done. It is, isn't it? It scores absolutely gorgeous. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay. So, have we got time for a break? I know somebody says, oh, Michelle's speed crafting. Um, but, but I know there's still quite a lot to do, isn't there, Michelle? Um... You've got all we've, the pockets yeah, to make. Yeah, we've got two little boxes for the inside to make and then mats and layers, so... Mm. And then really the only other thing is just decorating the, the lid, so I don't know. What do you think? What do you think, Dean? Should we let's have a quick break? Yeah. Just a short break and let everybody catch up because it'll give everybody time to catch up and then we'll come back and Michelle will do the layers on the inside. And that I think I'm guessing they're the same measurements on the outside. Um, so, they're slightly different slightly because different. they're going to fit inside my pockets. Oh, there we go. She made it even more complicated for me. So, right, <laughs> you watch this little bit all about Crafters TV. We'll be back in a couple of minutes and we'll do the insides. What makes Crafters TV so special is uh, you guys. It's really special because the the experts are really experts. They're... they're um, really skilled at what they do and they want to make sure that the audience also improves on their skills. Crafters TV is so special because you've got together a really sort of key group of people um, and people that are very passionate about the products. Crafters TV is so special because it's a unique community that we have with each other where we can learn and grow and communicate with each other. Community, the family spirit, the education, everything to do with craft. We are all like-minded people who share a passion. I love all the inspiration the demonstrators bring and all the knowledge for us out here. What makes Crafters TV so special, 100% is the interaction. No other crafting TV channel or show has the same interaction. I love the community, I love chatting live, uh, I think that's the best part and uh, it's gone beyond crafting because we've become friends. It feels to me to be a really, really close relationship with our customers and viewers. You guys make us feel like we're part of your family. I've never been on the show before, but one of my friends who I did meet from CCTV encouraged me and I was on the craft along. A massive team of people and I think they've all got their role to play uh, and it just brings everything together. It allows us to do our job and just love it. Ah, oh, the people obviously, the people not just here at Crafts Companion, uh, but the viewers that watch us, I mean everybody. We have this real magical essence about it. Bye for now. Bye. We get to know people from places and walks of life that we wouldn't come across in our everyday life if it wasn't for um, Crafters TV and doing what we do. I got so many lovely comments from people when I started doing the presenting and it was just really such a lovely um, feeling and it's nice that people keep messaging in, you know, we see the same, same people and we know you can build up that kind of relationship with those people so it's just the fact that people like what we do and they're pleased and I do love it when people send us photographs of the items they've made. We talk about customers but really the go in as a customer, come out as a friend. The support that I get is amazing. The messages I get are amazing. Me personally, it is personal interaction. I've never had the best of health. I've always been open about that uh, with our viewers at Crafters TV. So many people are in the same situation as me health-wise. Other people have got a completely different health issues. They understand and they relate to what I'm going through, what others are going through. So whether we interact on a crafting basis or whether we interact on a health basis, a personal basis, we're all there to support one another. It is incredible. The reaction of viewers when they come to meet us is worth all of the, the early mornings when we have to get up for our early morning shows. Some of the customers come on as craft ambassadors and things like that, craft along with us and being able to actually chat with them on air. I love it, I really love that connection with them. We've had lots of uh, shows where we've done like um, craft alongs especially, where we've had viewers craft along with us. We had a particular viewer, Joy, who joined us once before and she literally made me cry on air and Jo uh, because the things 
she said about us, it really was quite humbling that there are people out there that watch us and, and invite us into their living rooms and really treat us like family. Hello and welcome back probably to the last section of this show. Um, quick question, Rachel said where did you get the lock mechanism from? Just go on to your search engine and Google it and that's the easiest way, that's how um, Michelle got her, she just Googled them, so there we go. And Gina Henshaw said, this looks a lovely project, Michelle, just love it, there we go. I think I've had a few that I might have missed out. Patricia Powell says, I'm going to do some crafting today. Um, and then Miles says, my Violet Studio trimmer is my go-to, I absolutely love it, there we go. Oh, lots of people loving Stephanie's craft room, saying it looks very organised. I remember last time she was on, and we had a quick chat about her um, craft room. So, yes, absolutely gorgeous. There we are. Okay, right now, we've done the base, the lids, we've done the acetate, we've created the wallets going to go inside, and Michelle's done the mats and layers for the outside. So, I think now we're going to do mats and layers for inside. We are. Brilliant. We absolutely are. So I've got my trimmer again and I've got some of my cream card, exactly the same as I've created the um, outside with and I'm going to create those two inside boxes. So we're going to cut, so we need two, so we're going to, um, let's do it that way first. So 10 inches by three and a quarter. So you should be able to get both, maybe, if I'm judging it right. Three and a quarter. Three and three quarters. Three and three quarters. Seven and a half. So. Yeah. yeah. Three and three quarters. Three and three quarters. Yeah, because it's eight and a quarter, isn't it, April? Yeah. So, two of those pieces. Let's pop that to the side. It's because I look at my instructions, um, and it's sometimes like I don't quite believe myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we're going to score on the long side um, at four inches and then we're going to score it at four and three quarters and then we're going to score it at eight and three quarters and then we're going to score it at nine and a half we're going to turn it onto the short side and we're going to score it at three inches. Ooh. So what this gives you is the base is yeah. um, three quarters of an inch and the sides are three quarters of an inch. Ah, yeah. Um, so if we fold that, so you know when I said earlier, it's like when we make our bags. Yeah. So we're just going to create the box like that and then obviously we've, we've got that score line at the bottom that we're going to create a bag like box with. So we're going to do exactly the same on this piece. On the long side, we're going to score it at four. Yep. And then four and three quarters. Eight and three quarters. Because I've got that light that shines right there just above me. <laughs> I just have to lean back <laughs> to scar it. So we're at eight and three quarters and then nine and a half. And then turn it round and on the short side, we're gonna scar it at three inches. There we go. So let's pop that underneath there. And then we're just gonna, we're gonna scar all these um, lines, so scar and burnish. So what that means is our pocket is going to be um, three inches um, deep and it's going to be by that four inches wide and then the, all that three quarters, three quarters of an inch. So let's give those a good burnish. Turn that one over. So as we um, usually do with these, I'm just looking for my scissors. They're under this mess somewhere. Um, on that tab on the end, we're going to trim. Have you not? This, you've not burnished one of your score lines. Oh, I haven't ever. 
So I'll just test in again. Okay. <laughs> I pass. I've definitely earned that chocolate tonight. You definitely have. Uh, so with my tab at that side, we're going to trim that corner away. And then I always take a little triangle out of mine on each of those um, scar lines. So to that side and that side. I find that it just folds a lot nice and neater that way. That side. And then there as well. So we'll pop that to the side and we'll do exactly the same on this one. I think most of mine are scored. Give them a just a nice good burnish. This side as well. And then I always fold that under piece, that small tab under, away from me to scar it. Just scars a lot nicer. And then that long piece. So again, I mean, I've got my tab on the, this side. It's just because I scarred it the other way, that's all. But it's exactly the same. So those little wedges that I always take away and then we'll come to this one as well a little wedge there and this is my tab so we're going to cut that whole corner away uh, and then we're just going to glue these um, shut so folding it over like that we're just going to pop glue on here so it's up to you red liner or your tacky glue so i'm going to pop red liner on this bit the, the reason i've used red liner on this bit is because i've got that chocolate in mm -hmm. and I'm, for mine it's quite heavy so i think on this front bit the red liner is just the best. There we go. So I just fold it both ways to make sure it folds nice and lovely. And then we're going to tuck those two in and then we're going to fold that over and glue those flaps down. Brilliant. Patricia thinks this would make a good Halloween box. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, again, I've given you um, the ideas here to be able to take this away. Uh, it's nice and simply done. Um, takes, takes a little while, but some of the best things do, but nice and simply done. So you can adjust it to be able to um, make it a little bit bigger, make it a little bit smaller, um, create it for Christmas, birthdays, whatever you absolutely want. So again, I've popped a little bit of red liner tape on there because I've got that chocolate in. Um, it's just really going to give it strength. So I've got glue on those two tabs in here. On top of that red liner, I'm going to add some glue. And I'm using my tacky because it's coated cardstock, which just allows me that extra second to make sure that that is in place. Now, my, I've got a little bit of red liner tape just hanging over the bottom. So all I'm going to do with that is I'm going to lift it up with my pokey tool and I'm just going to trim it away. If you've done it on a piece that's going to be um, obvious and in sight, just pop a piece of um, paper, pattern paper, pattern card on, on that bottom bit. There's always ways to cover something up. Just tucking my tabs down so they stay nice and stuck. And that's one pocket. So we're going to do exactly the same. So let's pop the red liner tape on this tab. And trim that down. And then on one of these sides, it doesn't matter which side. Pop that on there. Gaz is loving this craft along. Oh, I'm glad. Is he crafting along or just watching now? Oh, this craft along is amazing. I'm loving it so far. So I don't know from that comment. <laughs> I want to be seeing your makes after, afterwards, Gaz. Oh, I want to see everybody's makes. Yeah, oh, absolutely. 
I love it. That's my favourite bit. Is that I love to see when everyone's created um, their creation, when they've done their take on it. I just love to see um, where they've taken it. Yeah, I do. It's just. It means that, for one, my measurements have made sense to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's really nice to see what other people do with what I've sort of um, shown them. I feel like a mum. Do you? You know, you know I've given you those, you know, those base tools. tools yeah. And then, you know, you're going to go off and you're going to do, you're going to do your thing. <laughs> Let's fold that over. There we go. And then my fingers are just not long enough to fit in there, so I always no. use my pokey tool or my bone embossing. Folder. Yeah, bone folder. So there we go. So I've got my two boxes. And if I bring this in, open it up, you can see that they're going to sit on each side lovely. This is um, two inches wide, so that's why I've done these both just shorter than that inch deep, so the three quarters of an inch, so when it closes, they don't sit right together, so it means you can pop embellishments on here as well if you want to. But before we glue those on, um, I'm going to get all my mats and layers cut. Be well, let me show you. So these mats and layers are going to go on, so that um, one there and that, and that will glue on straight away. But what we will do is we will pop that box on and then the mat and layer for this one and this one are going to go over. So you're going to glue your box on, your mat and layer is going to go in. So it just means that on the back you don't see the box because when you're looking down, because you can see that you can if I bring it in and just show you, when you're looking down, you can see into those boxes because it's not covered at the top. So the fact that the mats and layers go over your box rather than under it, just again, it's just a bit more pleasing for the eye. It's just a bit tidier. So let's pop that to the side. Did that make sense? It did. And okay. I hadn't realised it did that until you showed me just two minutes ago. Oh, um, guys, is crafting along. Oh, good. There you go. Go, guys, says Dean. <laughs> right, so... Um, Mats and layers, I don't need that card, do I? So, if I bring this in again, I've done blue and then red as mats and layers, and then I've done pattern paper. Um, so, that is what we're going to cut now. So, let's bring in blue and then green. Oh, you've got two mat layers, have I you? I have got two mat layers. You don't have to. You absolutely don't have to, but I did. Um, it just made the inside stand out a little bit more from the outside. So, let me bring in my guillotine. I'm going to bring in the blue. So, matte layer pieces. We have got two at four inches by six and three quarters. So, they're exactly the same height as on the outside, six and three quarters. Six and three quarters. And then they're four inches wide, so we need two at four inches. So this is the bit that might confuse people, because on the outside, they're four and a quarter. Yeah. So on the inside, they're four. They are, because what I want them to do is I want them to fit inside here. Like that. So when that fits in there, it's going to, um, when we glue it down, it's going to fit in there perfectly. If My box is four inches wide. If you want to do that a little bit thinner than the four inches, then absolutely, you've got the ability to do that. But it slots in there beautifully. So we're going to do that. And then, um, so we need some more, don't we? We need those uh, two, what are they called? I keep wanting to call Spines. them. Spines. That's it. Thank you. Spine. <laughs> So the two spine pieces, again, they're exactly the same height. They're that six and three quarters. And we're going to go down to one and three quarters. So let me just bring that in and make sure that I'm happy with that. I am. So one and three quarters. We need two of those. Anna, you see that got that out because you, your other panels are a little bit s slimmer. 
You managed to get that out the whole width. Yes, yeah. And then we need that one extra one. Yeah, it's six and three quarters. Let me see if that's wide enough. By one and a quarter. Oh, it is. It's just right. Oh, that was lucky, wasn't it? It is. It... Efficient. That's it. Six and three quarters by one and a quarter. So again, bringing this in because it's going to go on the inside. Come making sure working. that I'm happy with the fit before I commit to gluing anything down. So popping that back to the side. So we've got two. All these are six and three quarters high. We've got two that are four inches wide. We've got two that are one and three quarters of an inch. And we've got one that is one and a quarter. Perfect. So we're going to go with the green now. If you don't want to do two layers of plain and then a pattern, this sizing now is where you would go for your pattern. Yes. So we have got six and a half. And then, so there was four inches, so we're going to go down to three and three quarters. And you've got that lovely mat. So we need two of those. Pop those together. And then, so these ones were, they were one, one and three, three quarters, weren't they? Mm -hmm. So this is going to be one and a half. So two pieces at one and a half. I think, I love my guillotine, but I do think that it looks easier when you're doing slim pieces on your paper trimmer. Yeah. Because yeah, you've got definitely. the markings right to the end, aren't you? That's it. That's it. Um, that one was one and a quarter. So this one is going to be one inch. One. Crafty oh. Stacey Lou says, I'm 30 minutes behind, but this craft along is just something else. It's a craft along, it's not a race. Please do it in your own time. Yeah. There is absolutely no rush whatsoever. I know I, uh, people joke and call me the speed crafter, but you've got to remember this. This can be paused. This can be rewatched later. Um, you can watch this as you can watch me on mute if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want you on mute, Michelle. <laughs> right. So what did we do? We said so six and three quarters six and a half so you know this is going to be six and one quarter so before i go any further i'm going to pop it on there make sure that it is correct and it is so this is going to be two pieces at three and a half and again bringing that in to make sure that i've got it right so another one at three and a half and then, so what did we do? Let me just double check. That's one and a half. So we're going to go down to one and a quarter. So again, let's pop it on there. Double check and it's fine. So two pieces at one and a quarter. And then finally, this one is now an inch, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that is going to be three quarters of an inch. If anybody's seen us do mats and layers, they know how we just drop down by a quarter of an inch yes. every time. Yeah, that's exactly it. Nothing uh, more difficult than that. So let's lay all these out. And then we know what we're gluing to what. <laughs> <laughs> so that one on there. That. On there, and then finally, let's move that piece. We've got that there. So literally, all we're going to do now is we're going to glue these together, either with your tacky glue um, or your tape pen. It's entirely up to you. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, we've got uh, Linda Duvier. What? I'm not sure I say that. On YouTube, says hello, Duvier. I'm being told. Ha ha hello, crafty friends. Happy Saturday, everyone. Well, happy craft. Happy Saturday to you too, Linda. Kim Lusk says, I'm watching this while having lunch. I cannot wait to get home to make this. There we go. Um, and then Lynn Miles says, I wonder how many of the makes we see have had their chocolate bars eaten? <laughs> I don't know. We're taking ours home. We're taking ours. You see, I've already, I've already, I've already... <laughs> 
put ownership on the chocolate. <laughs> uh, which one though, the caramel <gasps> or the normal? Caramel. You can't beat a caramel, can no. you? No. A bit special. No, it's not. It's a caramel one. Oh, it's beat. Caramel, yeah. caramel nibbles. Yeah. Anything caramel. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. I think uh, Stephanie looks to be getting on well too. I can see her. She, she's, she's smiling. So we, um, we'll go and catch up with her in two minutes and see how she's doing. But she's busy crafting. I saw her, saw her watching when you were doing all your little boxes. Oh, there she is. So here she comes along. Hello, how are you doing? You're still smiling. Oh, brilliant. You've got your little boxes done. Fabulous. I could see your concentration when Michelle was doing those. <laughs> she makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you're catching up. So is everything making sense? Yes, it is. Brilliant. That's all we need to know. So, yeah, you sound, looks like you're, you're all coming together. So I won't keep you for long so that you don't get left behind. But as long as you're following it, then I'm sure everybody else is too. I think I'm doing better this time around. Yeah, you haven't cut yourself today. She's still got all her fingers no. today. <laughs> and I'm also being safer. You've got your... Ah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, we live and learn, don't we? We live and learn. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> your, craft, your craft room still does look absolutely gorgeous, Lynn. It's still very tidy behind you. Well, this way I can find things now. It took a long time to get one of these shelving units in, but yes. at least I'm organized. I can see what I have a little better, so... I'm hopefully going to use it. <laughs> exactly. We don't, we can't use what we don't know we've got, can we? No, we can't. Exactly. Okay, I'll let you crack on, and then we'll go back to see how many of these layers our Michelle has got stuck down. So I'm, I'm nearly there. Nearly there. I did... Um, me, uh, Stephanie messaged me, um, and I let her know what was on the craft along. She said, I do know I've got that shadow box die somewhere. She says, I'll have to... Uh, Go dig it out. <laughs> she found it. She found it. I do love that paper. Like you say, it's almost luminous, isn't it? It is. It absolutely is, yeah. The bits of it when you can almost see those stars shining, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's I just... think you'll get away with this without it being Christmas, this side of the paper, can't you? It's, yes, absolutely. It, it feels quite zodiac or... It does. Um, Oh, what, mandala -esque? I was going to say, because you've got sort of those mandalas in the corner, there's nothing on it that screams out, this is Christmas paper. No. Not at all. No. Is this your only craft along this weekend? It is. You had about three the other week. I had three, up, yeah. You? Yeah, I did. Wow. So I've got my bits all glued together now. Brilliant. So we're going to bring... I'm just going to push those up because... I was saying how we're going to glue that box in first. Mm -hmm. So making sure that those are nice and flat. Um, before I do glue those on, the only other thing that I did was I brought in... So this, this 12 Days of Christmas. Yeah. So I just... It's a beautiful topper pad and you've got all these particular elements on here. So I have got a couple of sheets that I cut out and I think I'm going to use whichever ones you want, but I'm going to use a couple of these. So we know, let me just pop this to the side again. We know this box is four inches wide. Now I'm not too bothered that it's only three inches wide because these toppers are going to go a little bit bigger. So we're going to cut um, these out first. So we're going to make sure that some of these are just so... They're just under that four inches wide, so they're practically exactly the same um, width as, as the box that I want them to do, to be. So bringing in our trimmer, we're going to... So you can mat and layer these as well. So on this one, let me bring it in. I did mat and layer it onto some red cardstock, which we're going to do again, but we're going to do it... I'm using the green... So we're going to cut two squares of card. So we're going to cut two squares that are three and three quarters. And then, so measuring these, if you're using a different topper, just measure the, the heights of your topper. So these are, 
again just short of four. So we're going to go three and three quarters with the green by three and three quarters and we're going to cut two of these. And you can see it's going to sit on, on my box perfectly and it goes that little bit bigger which is just it's lovely. So bringing in these two toppers you're just going to trim these down to I'm going to use I'm just going to use these bottom two. So it needs to be three and a half by three and a half but what you're going to do first is just trim uh, round the actual pattern first. So let's trim that top and that bottom. And then so I'm going to trim, bring that back round because it needs to be three and a half. So I'm going to try and get as much away um, at the top as I am at the bottom. So I've got an equal amount of green at the top and the bottom. Yeah. So then this is going to finally go to that three and a half inches on there and trim down lovely. So if I bring in my green card, you can see I've got a border at the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the same on this one. So I'm going to trim all that blue away to start with. And I think... That's just cut perfectly. Now, mine's a bit fluffy because it just means that my bl blade needs tr uh, changing, that's all. But I can trim those away with my scissors anyway, so no need to worry about that. Because I think we do have something very exciting coming, don't we? Um, with regards to the trimmer and the blades. Do we? We do. I've missed that one. Have you not seen? No. I don't know if it's been previewed on QVC, so I don't want to say. But I will be... Uh, oh, you can show me. Yes, yeah, something very exciting. So I just bring in my big scissors and I trim those fluffy bits away. If you go in for the rustic look, you're going to enhance those um, fluffy bits, you know, by distressing the edges. But if you're not, just trim them away with your scissors. They've just come off perfectly. There we go. So we're going to just glue these two pieces on. So, on there. And then pop that one on there. You can see it mats and layers. Now, I've... I've forgot I always forget I've to put my ribbon on so let me bring these in again I forgot to put my ribbon um, underneath the paper on this one so I popped it round the red card uh, you can do it either way it's entirely up to you so I have got my roaring 20s because the gold in here and the green and the blue ties in beautifully with this so you can just pop some ribbon around the edges if you want. Um, I'm not going to because just for time wise, I want to make sure that I get this finished. The ribbon is something that you can obviously do if you want to. So just popping that on there. And all I do with my ribbon is you get your sort of your strip of ribbon, pop it round there, and when you bring it under there, it can go then go across. Ah, very clever. Um, so it keeps it nice and neat at the back as well. So just you just wrap it round. It's almost like um, wrapping a parcel. Right. So I think we've got all our pieces now that we can pop this together. So we're going to, let's glue those two pieces on first, because they're nice and simple to pop on. Pop that one there. And then the next one. And what I always do, if I've got brads or anything like that, I'm going to pop some red liner over those. Because you're going to be opening and closing that clasp, you don't want it to work loose. Right. Um, I mean, it probably wouldn't, and I can't see why it would. 
but you don't want it to because once it's worked loose and you've got mats and layers on there's no there's no going back so let's pop just red line it just over there well. it stops it piercing the paper of and course, everything yeah it? it does pop red line on there just red liner over there lots of love for this craft along and the papers and everything oh god right so we'll, we'll um turn it that way and i'm just gonna we're gonna pop that on now so let's take take that off and then glue just normal glue all over the back And then just make sure you line it up well. I think that's what makes all the difference. If you make sure all your mats and layers line up top and bottom, it just looks so much more professional, doesn't it? It does. It really does. So let's, we're going to pop that on here first. And then we're going to pop that onto there. And then this will go, let me just go in there. And it will be glued like that. Brilliant. So is the box glued um, level with the bottom or is it up a bit? Um, so it depends on this. So pop this in first, right down to the bottom of your box. And you're going to pop it on here before you glue it on. And um, I can see by making sure that that's lined up with this. Mm -hmm. So from the bottom, I can see this is maybe one eighth of an inch up. So it's just, mm -hmm. just not, got yeah, not level line. with the bottom. It is roughly that far off the bottom. Yeah. Can you even see that? Yeah. There. Yeah. Now you can see it. That's how far off the bottom it is. Um, if you pop this in here and you pop it on here and you're finding that that's too far off, just go in here. Trim a little bit off the bottom. Because it doesn't matter about mats and layers. You're not going to see it on that bottom bit. Mm. And then you can pop it on. So let's do it on this side first. We're going to glue that on here. So remembering not to glue all the way to the top because we've got that um, sort of three quarters of an inch over the top. And just pop that on there. Making sure it's all nice and lined up pop it that way so look at that i just the tiniest little bit over if, there you go just rub it away and because it's going to be popped on that way you're not going to see it anyway so either with red liner tape tacky glue or both on the back of this box um, depending again on what you're popping in there you want to make it as strong as possible I'm going to line it up that tiniest little bit away from the bottom, making sure that it's evenly in the middle, there and there. And then we're going to pop glue on this and pop it into that pocket. Perfect. And you glue all over because it's gluing it onto the box and it's gluing it into the pocket, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to turn that round. I'm going to pop that in. And you can see that I've judged that lovely. Press it down. I can't fit my hand in there. This is where my ruler always comes in handy to be able to flatten all that in there. So second pocket, let's do that again. Oh, and another thing is when I folded it over at the bottom, so you've got that um, edge of the card there, but you've got that lovely folded edge mm -hmm. there. Always make sure that you've got your folded edge on the outside. Ah, yes. Again, just it's nice and tidy. Lynn Morton says, how long have you been crafting, Michelle, and also to myself? I always think I could never make that look, make that and look that good. Oh, you can? Yes. You can. How long have you been crafting? Um, so 15 years. Mm -hmm. But I've been making boxes for nearly as long as that because that has always been my favourite thing to do. Has it? It has, absolutely. Oh. And, so and I, I think as soon as we say, oh, I couldn't do that, I think instantly you just don't try. Yeah. 
ask? We can. It's all about practice. It's all about using the right products. And I'm sure you can, Lynn. I'm absolutely sure you can. I started September 1991. was the first craft class I ever went to. Oh. Mm. Yeah. 1991. Oh, I was still at school. Not 1990. 2001. Oh, OK. Sorry, 2001. <laughs> Blind. 1991. I wasn't very old. Uh, yeah. No, 2001. Yeah. Sorry. I always get muddled. I always say 91, and I mean 2001. <laughs> I met my husband in 1991. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah, we've got our 30th wedding anniversary next year. Wow. Yeah. I've told him I want a good holiday. <laughs> or he won't make 31. <laughs> he knows. Oh, I'm all wonky. Oh, yeah. It's because I've got that red liner on this one, so it ah, just, just caught, caught a little bit wonky. Down. Let me just adjust that down. In fact, I'll tell you what, let me just stick that in there. There we go. Just because I've got that red liner, it's just catching. So I just need to make sure. Start from the bottom upwards. Yeah. DX says this would make such a nice gift, having thank you cards in it. And she said it's so beautiful, Michelle. Yes. Lots yeah. of people are loving this. And I, you can see how easy it would be able to change with just the papers. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely gorgeous. Um, any of your papers that are in your stash, you're going to be able to use with this. Definitely. So I might need to pop a bit of glue on because I pulled that off and I've tried to stick it back down. Is it not catching? No, it's not. Let me... It's catching at the top, just not in that middle bit. Go on, you can do it. go. So let's try that again. Just, you need to make sure that when you've got those brads on, they're as flat as possible. And also remember, when you are popping this side on, you have that little bit of um, red liner tape to contend with. So let's cover that up. <laughs> with some wet glue and then try again pop that right on that line Ooh. Uh, we i need to i could possibly do it while you're doing a bit up uh, here i could do with getting a vote for demo of the day oh because mm. i need i need your finish one of those as well do you want me to pass you over my if you could. finished one? Without the chocolate or with? We'll do it without the chocolate <laughs> for now. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Right, thank you. I mean, it doesn't actually take a lot of thought to which one's probably going to win. <laughs> Demo of the day, OK. But you never know. Better get this done just because we've only actually got eight minutes, seven and a half minutes of the show left. So this is for demo day. Obviously, craft long, only one demo. So this is cr um, the demo of the show. So number one is those interchangeable scenes. Number two is the Christmas corner dies. And number three is this one here from the craft along using the 12 days of christmas if you would like to vote and i'll see as you'll count them up okay i'll see um, which ones you vote for i'm just using my ruler to reach into that pocket that i can't reach into um so we've got that lovely bit on the inside so let me pop that to the side because the only other thing that i did um was on the lids so we've got um Again, we've got corner die, uh, we've got those corner embellishments that came with the mini memories. Or again, um, I got this from the, the website that's a bit like um, a rainforest. Just search for jewellery box corners or jewellery box locks, um, things like that. So um, this is six by four. I cut a red piece of card. Um, again, that quarter of an inch. So five and three quarters by three and three quarters. I've glued those corners on, so if I just move those, I've popped just a little bit of ribbon around the corner. Uh, so again, using this lovely gold ribbon, popped that round the corner. I've just got some gems, they're just like little flat flower gems mm -hmm. um, that I used on here. So I've got three smaller ones across that corner. 
I've got one in the middle and for the bows all I've done is I have just got my bone folder and I've just um, give so them these are pre-cut dye yeah. elements from the 12 days of Christmas yeah so these are those pre-cut ones so I've used three of those I've popped one onto a foam pad and then I've glued it onto there I've got my second one again I've done exactly the same I've curved all those edges it's so impressive to see this bit finished yeah yeah so let me just find some more foam pads and then popping it just on that centre bit because it's going to be covered up by one of my gems. So take that off and pop that together and do exactly the same with the third one. You don't have to pop three on if you don't want to use three of your die cuts or pre-cut elements. But again, pop just foam pads on that middle bit there. Take that off. And you've got a really lovely multi-layered, um, I, I mean, call it, it a rose, it's a bow. Popped it on there with some hot glue. I've got that on there. Um, I've got one of my sentiments here with a flower stuck to it. Um, and then on the front, so again, if I just bring this in, I've just popped a sentiment on the bottom here. I've just popped one of those bows on some foam on there. And that's the only other thing that we're not going to get a chance to do. Absolutely glorious. Absolutely. And apparently, apparently beautiful um, craft along. Thank you, Michelle, says Lois. Apparently, I wonder which one got demo of the day. One, number one two or three oh, how did you know <laughs> no could say it's number one no it's not number one maybe it was number two no it was number three <laughs> the craft along has one demo of the day i thought it might oh we might have had a photo we might not be able to get it on now but we can always have a look another time thank you uh gaz oh he's, he's just sent what he's done so far have we got quickly time to say hello to stephanie to see how she's doing uh how are you doing there stephanie oh look i can see i'm moving along um i do need to review some of what was happening with yeah. what I'm supposed to be doing because I was crafting, but if I hold this up, whoops. <laughs> oh, I love the paper you've yeah. picked. I picked this. That's lovely. These aren't these two aren't glued in yet, but no, I can um, see, yeah. give an idea. That's and this I have on the outside. <gasps> ah, you cut yeah, it across so the that you perfect. Paper. That looks amazing cutting your paper like that. I'm loving that. So there's not <laughs> much there's not too much more to do. No, it's just deciding on what little bits to put where and yeah. that takes me the longest for some reason. That's absolutely fine. Please, please post a picture of it on social media and tag Michelle, Michelle and myself in it. We'd love to see it when you've finished it, Stephanie, whether it's today or tomorrow. I absolutely will. We Thank you. We would love you. to see that. I hope you've had a lovely time. I hope you've enjoyed doing it. Are you putting chocolate in yours or little gift cards? What's going in your pockets? Well, I guess right now the only chocolate I have to put in are these little doves. <laughs> All right. <laughs> They're chocolate. Oh, well, anything works. Anything works. You could always put them in a little net bag and so they would all hold in. little bag of chocolate would look lovely. So, yes. Well, I, I, I believe it would. I, and thank you so great much too. For Enjoy your us. chocolate. Thank oh, you. We will. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. It's been lovely to see you, and I'd love to see what you've done. That looks stunning it so does. far. It really, really does. Thank we, you. We're looking it's been a lot of you. fun with both of you, and you know, a glass of wine with the chocolate would go nicely too. Maybe, what? maybe, maybe. Perfect night. She's, <laughs> she's had a spy of what we've got planned, Michelle. Maybe she has. Um, absolutely gorgeous, make. Michelle says, Catherine, Aww. everybody is loving this. I hope you've enjoyed it, Stephanie. And it's something that you maybe make again sometime in the future. I have. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again on another Craft Along very, very soon. I hope so. I do yes. too. Yeah. So it's been lovely to have you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Bye. Okay. So
so we are nearly there for the end of the day so thank you for voting michelle's craft along as demo of the day we've had an absolutely amazing time it's been lovely thank you for sticking with us when we had a few little technical problems this morning it's all been um going on really well don't forget if you want the weekend wonder you've got your um, special offer on that and don't forget if you're buying individual items across the website to use website 20 to get that 20 percent discount but we're going to do it all again tomorrow it's michelle and i and it's all about recapping september it is september we just finished isn't it first of october tomorrow so it's all about recapping september tomorrow so please come back and join michelle and i 11 3 and 6 tomorrow to have a look at everything that's gone on all this month so until then have a lovely evening afternoon see you tomorrow